right. Hello, everyone. I think we're good to go. Welcome once again to the Weekly Dig. I normally have a thing that I talk through, which I have completely forgotten <coughs> because, you know, but I do know it's Saturday night. Technical Saturday night. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's time for the Weekly Dig. Um, for anyone new to the stream, it's a live show. We'll be digging into anime, old and new. I am Brent. These are my incredible co-hosts, John. Hey, hey. Oh, where's my hand? Ah, how you doing? <laughs> Konnichiwa. Come on. And Steve. Hello. Hi. And we are streaming on a new platform tonight. Not a new, like, internet platform, but new hardware. So if you see, hear some weird things, see some weird things, just... Let me know. I don't. I can't promise I can fix it, but let me know. <laughs> it's it's that kind of a thing, you know. You got what you can. Hey, Morph. Good to see you. Um, we're gonna do what we can, best we can. Um, and yeah, let's let's get right into it. Hey, Jay. Um, let's just get right into it because uh, tonight we're gonna start by analyzing episodes nine through ten of mm -hmm. Serial Experiments Lane, beginning with. Layer 9 Protocol. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of heavy, real, um, interesting factoid things that yeah. Yeah. Right within it. Yeah. Totally. Um, it's really fascinating because the, the show hasn't been like this at all mm -mm. up to this no. point. No. Um, suddenly we get this sort of documentary style stuff. <clears throat> and you can kind of tell that they're really having fun with After Effects in this. They're like, oh, we can throw all sorts of like imagery on top of things and zoom text in and out. Yeah, um, which <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. And again, you know, anime had not been doing that. Like that's not a typical thing in in the anime industry. So having a heavily digital production gave them a lot of uh, a lot of practice with the video toaster there. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, definitely playing around a bit, uh, with that. And the first thing we get actually is the whole thing about uh, Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell. Yes. Um, you can't. Can't have this without Roswell. <laughs> it all goes back to Roswell. Always, all goes back to Roswell. Yes. And what's fascinating about this is they talk about Roswell and airship and uh, uh, an aircraft crashed. We know that much. And then they literally show us like doctored photographs of a crashed UFO. Yeah. Which <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was trying to because it's so they did a great job. It's so grainy. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, is right. this part animated? Or is this <laughs> I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't quite tell. Well. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, but, weird. And can you only imagine? I've never seen it on the VHS, so I yeah. would, can only imagine <laughs> oh, how, how like how you would be like, it's, it's just, did someone just wipe their thumb across the cell? And yeah, what, what, what is that? No, it, it was really neat. I, I mean, but you know, the, the funny thing about it was, was just like this is like the first time in the entire series for me thus far where I'm like going, oh, context. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like. The scenes actually relate to each other. It's not right. just you know, <laughs> completely random things. Um, although how much they relate, we'll, we'll see in a bit. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's, it's this interesting sort of juxtaposition of real-life event with fiction added in, as far as we know. No. Um, uh, and then we, we have uh, Lane. Um, and remember, this is just post-rumors. Um, uh, so right. she's you know, re rewritten reality so that everyone has forgotten about what happened, and she is clearly not too, too happy about the outcome of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, did you notice her, her stuffed animals are facing out again? Oh, it's right. ah, okay. Yeah, interesting. So it's like in the window. They're not facing in looking mm. at her. They're facing out to the outside world. Interesting. Like, yeah. oh, here we go again. <laughs> interesting. Um and she sits exactly. in, like, a puddle of coolant. Yeah. <laughs> like, with all the electrical equipment. Awesome. And it's, it's worth noting, um, I think this is the first time we've seen the bear outfit since, like, episode one. Yeah. Um, and so we're kind of, you know, calling back to her more normal, if you will, you know, <laughs> um, uh, life. Yeah. Where she's, she's obviously kind of back to her normal self. Um, whoops. We, what, what happened there? Hold on. Oh, okay. Sorry. Didn't realize that. Resizing the, the window actually resized the thing. So hopefully folks can see that a little bit better now. Um, um, and then somebody enters the room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did y'all think of that? That moment? It reminded me of Ghost Town. Mm. 
like completely because it's just like. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the thing that went, oh, I yeah, know. <laughs> to the door, what is it? So you had actually a while ago, Brent, told mm-hmm. me that this was part of the anime. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. way a, a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. And so I had forgotten. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the little guy shows up and he does the really creepy ass smile. <laughs> and, and Who knew and, Grace um, had tea? Yeah. It's before 10 o'clock, so I can't exactly say what I was saying. <laughs> but uh, I was, you know, sitting at my laptop in the in you know the other room watching it with my headphones on. I can only imagine what my next door neighbors were just like. Oh God, what's this about now? Because I was just like, no, why? Is Steve why watching anime, anime again? And yeah. God, and I was, well, they had, what episode was it that they had referenced? People yeah. have been seeing something mm-hmm. with a red and green striped mm-hmm. sweater and I'm like yep. oh yeah it's been a few episodes back and it's like finally we bring yeah. that round around the mm-hmm. band again I'm like oh connections um yeah and, and I just love her reaction to it she's like oh, you mm. <laughs> not me not me I'm freaking out I'm mm-hmm. just what, 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 what is this <laughs> what She's having a bit of an existential crisis right now, so yes. the gr- the gray showing up is like <laughs> sort of the least of her worries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> am I God? Is there God in the internet? Am I in the internet? Am I here? here. Who am I? I'm like, okay, we'll get to that. This little yeah. guy, don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's yeah, and there's a, a, a gray who just happened to buy this really classic sweater. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, um, so. Morph in in the chat asks, you know, "What do the aliens mean? Uh, what does the alien mean?" Um, there's an I, I think there's an obvious explanation, you know, alienation, right? It, it's about others, you know, and, and the idea of feeling kind of outside of yourself. Um, I think the alien in in this specific scene explicitly is more about the fact that alien that, that, that Lane feels like she is. Um, an alien to her friends, an alien to her environment, to her her house, all that kind of stuff. Stranger in a strange land. Exactly, and I am yeah. shocked that there's not a reference to that Heinlein novel uh, in here somewhere. This might be it. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Don't know. Um, um, and yeah, and it, it fades away uh, from from the doors. Just everyone's clear, uh, and so Lane kind of realizes it must be some kind of hallucination or something. Who knows? <laughs> Um, it should be pointed out. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we know that uh, Siberia causes issues, right? Yeah. Um, if Lane, as we n- know later, is kind of tampering with some of that technology, that could also be happening, where things are physically apparating in this environment because it's using that same sort of kids' technology, possibly. Yeah. Um, uh, and then also, yeah. Well, then. It's a good point, Morph. I mean, one of one of the the themes of the show is kind of misinformation, disinformation, lies, and truth. So it could yeah. also be kind of representing that Lane is getting into the the weirder side of the internet, <laughs> the deep web. Mm-hmm. Yep, the dark web. Oh boy, um, that's fun. Um, and then we get some some more history, and we get stuff about uh, MJ12 and um, majestic. Yes. Yep. Um, and finally, a reference to Manavar Bush, uh, who is yep. a real person. Um, he yep. uh, worked. He, he did work for the Office of Science and Technology Development, I think, some along those lines, during World War II. Um, and he did write this this uh, article called "As You May Think." And because we live in the modern world, uh, this afternoon I pulled that up on a tablet and read it. Uh, that article is freely available. It was published in the Atlantic, and the Atlantic has <coughs> republished that on right. their website, which is really cool. Um, and it's basically about. It's actually really interesting. Um, um, he basically says, and he wrote this in like the summer of 1945. Um, he was working on the Manhattan Project, so he knew the war was going to end soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the article said, "Okay, now that science has, now that the scientists have kind of." come together and organized um, around these, these sort of central ideas, um, and science is a little more kind of integrated than it was before, what are we going to work on after the war? What are the big kind of pressing problems? And he said the, the, the biggest problem scientists particularly have is information, information overload. Um, and he proposed various ideas around that, and one was this 
basically a desk called the Memex, uh, which would contain microfilm and a couple little screen readers. And um, the idea is you could just pull up microfilm on this, microfiche, and display stuff. And one of the cool ideas, he said, is he critiqued the fact that pretty much all of the ways of organizing information up to that point had been hierarchical. Dewey Decimal System, that kind of stuff. And he said, right. that's not how humans think. We are we think about it in relationships. So wouldn't it be cool if you could pull up two pieces of information, put them side by side, and then connect them? Um, and add like a keyword, and then connect different like pages of information. So if you're researching the tensile strength of bows, you know, you could pull up those information and do that. And so we, we, we could build these things that would later be called hyperlinks. Um, and so he was proposing all this stuff back in the 40s. And I'm a technology geek. I'm a programmer. So apologies if I get if I, I get sidetracked by this stuff because this is you know, this is this is my career. Um, <laughs> and so uh, later developers like um, Doug Rushkoff uh, and others um, um, use that as a springboard for the actual technologies of like hyperlinks, of hypercard, the World Wide Web, all that kind of stuff. Kind of goes back to Vannevar Bush back in the day, um, who also connects nicely to this conspiracy theory about uh, the Majestic 12, um, who are all part of some um, alien conspiracy. Yeah. Um, and so I just love how it's kind of weaving actual like, technology history in, into this show. Um, uh, Lane tries to learn more and fails <laughs> with this wonderful scene of her... Uh, talking to all of the, the folks in the wire. And we get kind of a repeat of how she's just, um, um, of how people are only, like, appearing as an eye or an ear. Yeah. Um, right. Wonderfully creepy. <clears throat> well, I also was trying to figure out the significance. It's like, okay, the guy with the ears mm -hmm. and the person with the mouth, it's like, okay, are these characteristics of people mm. that are typically in a, a wired environment? Some people just listen. Right. They don't mm -hmm. do. They yeah. Don't, yeah. They, now, mind you, listening right. person, ears person is contributing. But you know, I mean, the idea being, it's a lot of people just listen. Some people just talk and never listen. So the mouth mm -hmm. has no yeah. ears. Mm -hmm. Some people just look. So eyeball yeah. just has eyeball. And then mm -hmm. there's the lady with the arm. Yeah. <laughs> like, hmm. That sounds kind of like the lady with the with the child mm -hmm. playing video games. Mm -hmm. True. So I thought it might have been her, but I'm just like, mm -hmm. okay, so is that does that represent literally the just, physical just, input of typing? In? Yeah, or just doing things, right? Of being active and creating right. things. Maybe okay. Like right. Okay. Yeah. That may make sense more than watching, mm -hmm. viewing, mm -hmm. or you know, listening, etc. Actively yeah. participating. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I know. Who knows? Um, it's lame. It all means everything. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's what I was waiting for you to say about the, about the alien. What does the alien mean? What do you think it means? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, Whatever you have to think, whatever you want exactly. to be. Yeah. Tell me how you feel about the alien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it creeps me out. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're killing me. That told us about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we get more of... Um, uh, so Lane goes to Siberia, um, which, by the way, is the name of a book by Doug Rushkoff. One of the people yep. they, they mentioned here, yeah, that's, that's the connection. Um, mm -hmm. uh, where she she finds a circuit board left behind by her, yeah, um, which uh, gives rise to plenty more questions about who she actually is. But I think we're starting to learn now. We're trying to figure out these patterns. Um, that Lane in the nightclub is not exactly the same as Lane yeah. at home. Uh, we get a bit about John C. Lilly. Oh. Um, so K Kanaka is known, he, he loves conspiracy theories, he loves diving into all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, what he's doing here, I think very cleverly, is kind of tying in multiple levels of real history and essentially conspiracy theories that then relate to Lane in a way that kind of supports Lane's kind of concepts around technology. Um, in a way that doesn't have to like draw a direct line of saying, and thus this happened to this happened. Because yeah. um, John C. Lilly absolutely existed. He did all these experiments on dolphins, and sensory deprivation. Mm -hmm. He was a, uh, uh, he worked with Timothy Leary, all that good stuff. Um, and by good, well, that I must mean, have been really, a trip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. So yeah, so he, he was doing all that stuff, um, and working with dolphins and the the, the wonderfully 
cheap dolphin animation in this. Just this yeah. Dolphin that's kind of going... Eh, 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 I, I love eh, the noises eh, eh, that they were making. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. It really felt like, you know, uh, Windows 3.1 clip art and, like, <laughs> public domain dolphin sound effect just layered over each other. Search dolphin noise. Please. Insert. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> but it's got this great techno music over it. So you're like, ah, this is fun. Um, um, so then, yeah, so then Wayne interacts with Taro. Uh, we get more about, you know, he, he, she offers to take him out on a date, which yeah. surprised me. <laughs> well, did you also notice why the way that Siberia looks? Yeah. yeah. It is radically different. The, mm. the, the disco ball's not really going on, but the, but the lights are. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just like, so Siberia's changing. It's changing in, in Lane's uh, experience through there, mm-hmm. getting the chip. She's been there, and, and she's hearing more about herself being there. Yep. And then it's like these kids just seem to be, they look rather, like, exhausted. Yeah, I mean, yes, like, Conrad was just kind of sitting there, and he's got this kind of half closed eye thing. Like, he's slightly drugged out. Yeah. Well, same thing with the dancers, bored. too. Yeah. 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 The, the, they're, they're bored, and they're saying that the place is dead because it, it does look dead, and there's nobody in yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And so they're, you know, the, the, for want of wanting to go to a different place, they, they don't really know, I don't think, where to go because they're kids so maybe they're yeah. finally you, you know they really just don't know where they can access to or whatever mm-hmm. yeah. and then then Lane comes up and does the creepy hey you know little boy you want to go out with <laughs> yeah granted well, Taro's yeah. been asking out everybody else yeah so. <laughs> yeah except for and, Mew Mew it, she yeah, apparently true. doesn't yeah, yeah. yeah. and really then there's that whole I mean, internet change of with the third friend going uh, you don't need to be there what, what do you yeah. mean <laughs> oh Jesus okay um, but the the part where there's this like uncomfortable silence and you see the back of Lane and the three kids look at Lane and they all get this shocked expression. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's the first time they actually see the transformation mm. happening, mm-hmm. and you know that's just. But we don't get to see it, mm-hmm. which is kind of kind of interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, there, there's that that moment where clearly, and then we 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 cut and we see she has that intense. Expression on her face. Yeah. Um, which is funny because, you know, all throughout the scene, she's been very much normal lane, but it's like she... And I think it represents she's kind of switching on that aspect of her personality. Um, so for those who haven't been following along, um, I believe there is a separate lane of the Wired, in the Wired, and then there is a physical lane, but the lane in the Wired is an earliest copy, if you will, of Lane's consciousness. Um, so this other lane is can interact with the world in Siberia and such. But, like, everything we see in that other lane is in real-life lane somewhere. Right. Um, so she is now gaining the ability to kind of switch on that side of herself, that more more uh, aggressive side of her of herself directly. Um, yeah, exactly, Morph Ball. And Siberia is a perfect place because that's where you have this sort of melding of the worlds. Yeah. Um... And then, yeah, and then Taro comes back to Lane's place. I love the idea that Lane just had, you know, they don't go anywhere. <laughs> she doesn't take him out of the cafe. No, we just go back to, okay. Go All back right. to her computer cave. <laughs> and I love that Taro's like, what's this thing cooled with? Liquid carbon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, what? Wow. Like, Is it frozen in carbonite? <laughs> no. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong show. Yeah. Um, and I was waiting for Brent's uh, Brent's explanation is liquid carbon they think that you can cool something with. Oh yeah. I mean, um, I mean carbon dioxide is a very good coolant. Um, and so, so is that what he's getting at? Is yeah. liquid carbon dioxide? Yeah. Versus I, I, like, I believe that's the idea. I'm just imagining yeah. diamonds flowing around. <laughs> like, hey, it's liquid carbon. carbon. Like, how the hell is that healthy? <laughs> um, one of the advantages of carbon dioxide is that um, um, it can uh, a portion of the liquid can become a gas, uh, which then super cools basically, or cools very right. quickly, um, and uh, creates sort of a snow uh, effect. Um, and so it's a very effective coolant if you can get it exactly right. Um, uh, it's really used for like cryogenics, by the way. And if and if it leaks, it kills you. Right, but that's okay. That's right. Um, I mean, you I could use ammonia for super cooling too, and right. it kills you just the same. Totally. Um, Neat. 
Um, so, yeah, so, th- so basically, you know, Wayne confronts Taro. She knows uh, that Taro is uh, um, working for the Knights in some capacity. A helper. A helper, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, and Wayne gets all effing creepy. I had to turn it off at this point. Really? Wow. Yeah. When she stuck the chip into his mouth, yeah. I said, nope, we're going <laughs> to walk away. We're going to walk away. Steve, it's not like she was brushing his teeth. Okay? <laughs> you know? You can, oh, you can hang God, out for this. You had to bring ball. Oh, <laughs> um, oh God, no. Yeah. No, you, you just, you know, just like, I'm just like, going, oh, God, what is she going to do? Oh, what is she going to do this poor kid? All right. Okay. Yep. But, uh, so I actually had to turn it off and, mm-hmm. and come back to it. And by the way, I did two watches of both of these episodes. Mm. To the, the uh, I did one last night and one earlier today, wow. mm-hmm. just to see if I, you know, of course I missed stuff. So you know, I'm just like <laughs> going through it, and I'm just like, like, wow, I'm making my face hurt all with all of this, <laughs> and uh, great. And there's this, oh, okay, just power through it, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> get to the other yeah. side. And um, but it's interesting how though, as I on the second watch after mm-hmm. I kind of got the creepiness of the first watch through was that I was just like okay so she's putting this thing in his mouth mm. he is appropriately scared mm-hmm. and I'm like thinking is he scared because he doesn't know what the hell is going on or is he scared because he knows exactly what this chip mm-hmm. does mm-hmm. and is lame looking at him as I don't see you as a human being I see mm-hmm. you as a functioning component of a computer mm-hmm. so as part of the night so if I mm-hmm. shove this in your mouth mm-hmm. in a weird manner mm-hmm. and have you talk around it mm-hmm. you know this is how I get truth out of you mm-hmm. and so you know it's almost like she's accessing him mm-hmm. and in a weird way and I was just like and then after I watched that and I had those thoughts go through my head I said yeah. wow that, you know okay therapy <laughs> thank you <laughs> you know yeah um, well, that's uh, like the first time I watched it you know eons ago mm-hmm. it's the, now that I've watched you know the second time through um, I th- I was like literally ready for a Reservoir Dogs moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the first time I watched it, and she's going to put it in his mouth. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, this is the lane of the wire where she right. is. Mm-hmm. She will do what she's going to want to do, yep. which is shove this in. If he doesn't answer her correctly, mm-hmm. she's going to slam his lower jaw up and mm-hmm. bust this thing in his mouth, mm-hmm. and he's going to be like screaming and crying. She'd be like, "Tell me what's going on." Mm-hmm. And it With doesn't Steelers go there. Wheel no. playing in the background. <laughs> yeah, and like. Thank goodness it didn't go there. But yes. like, I was entirely prepared yeah. for that moment. Mm-hmm. Like how 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 far will Wired Lane mm-hmm. go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, because this was violence. Yeah. Yes. Well, and this was this was violence. I mean, it, it it was soft and it was you know a threat, but it was definitely violence. And even further, like before that, when she plays track forty four, like oh god, that yeah. is yeah. specifically like, she knows that screws with your head. Yeah. And he knows she she knows that, so he knows that this is she, she is trying to tunnel into his his head with this. this Mom thing. and Dad know this is bad. Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. We, we, we get that yeah. too. Where they're Everybody's like, aware this is a bad time right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Things are going on. And this is the thing I noticed this time around because um, they're they're downstairs saying you know let's kiss while we still have time, which yeah, there's a line. Yeah. Um, yeah. Both of them. Well. Sorry. Good. And I was just going to say, you know, and then I was thinking about that joke I made about two or three weeks ago. Oh, yeah, it's going to be the third impact. I'm like going, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. There's a slow clap at the end of this. I'm gonna... <laughs> for, for, for them, this is the third impact. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. coming. Yeah. Trains, trains are coming. Um, both of them look kind of drugged. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is affecting them, too. Um, and I hadn't really made that connection until this point that, oh, yeah, all this investigation Lane's doing, all of this technology she's bringing in, like the, those electromagnetic waves are coming out and hitting yeah. everyone else. Um, yeah. Which Mika, means... Mika, Mika wants to make a phone call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's trying to phone Poor home, Mika. trying to find a friend. Gosh. Which I did kind of wonder, seeing like the Roswell kind of thing. It's like, is there a vaguely homageish ET? Was ET mm. a thing at the mm-hmm. you know that somebody's like phone sure. home? Oh yeah, Mika. yeah. Beep, beep. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh boy, beep, here we go, mm-hmm. aliens, ET, oh, and totally. Mika making a phone call. Totally. <laughs> like, no, I, oh, boy. I think that's absolutely a, a connection they're making. Um, um, and agree the, the, that MJXX track, which is I believe what it's called on the on the soundtrack, um, is is awesome. That that like pulse pounding. You know yeah. the, the music. It, it does feel kind of weird. 
so so by the way, that song, mm. if you look it up on YouTube, mm. um, somewhere you should find a Samurai Jack AMV to that song. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. Talk about a trip. Yeah. Um, yeah, no joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just watched a little Samurai Jack today. Oh, it's nice. Um, so what's, what's also interesting about this scene is that up until this point when she's putting the circuit in his mouth, we have we, we've never seen technology like this interact with people, right? We've seen the Psuke processor, which is in a pill, um, and which you swallow, and it's like, okay, we can make, make that sense. But you can't literally, like, you know, install a sound card into a human. Um, and so, and I think Jay's absolutely right here, where, like, she's, she's thinking logically, but without consciousness of what's right or wrong, and she's kind of thinking robotically, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think she's literally trying to install this in Taro. I think she's just kind of doing it to freak him out. She's saying, oh, yeah. you, know, you, you don't know. You, know, you may think you know what this does. You, know, you may believe you know what that does, and I'm, I'm using that on you. But maybe I can literally, like, if this touches your tongue, it will take over your mind. You, who, who knows at this point? Um, and it's definitely freaking them out. But I don't think it's actually, I don't think it actually does that, personally. Um, well, and I mean, and that's the thing, you know, he... Just like I don't know, yeah. I don't know these things. You know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a knight. I'm mm. just helping. I, you know, play off me, lady. Yep, just a messenger. <laughs> um, yeah, she's scaring him to get what, what, uh, what she wants. Um, wow. Uh, and then she switches back. You know, suddenly she's laying again. Um, sorry, I freaked you out. Let's kiss. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. when he does that, I'm just like going, "Are you? Dude, <laughs> did you don't you know how crazy. close? <laughs> you know how close to death you were? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> or having your mind wiped or something? <laughs> you know, something. It's extraordinarily. You mm-hmm. almost became part of the machine, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's yeah. almost what happened. And he he puts his gum in her mouth. I'm like, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, just Come the icing on. on the cake of that whole scene. All middle school. Bring yeah. Up. Well, yeah. it, it's a great it's example. No one had braces. <laughs> they never they get, get lip locked. Right. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's it, it's a it's a great indication of of Taro, right? Like like Taro had, doesn't have a functioning brain cell in his body. Uh, you know, the kid is just all instinct and all just wow. This seems fun. You know, I think. Mm. I'm mm-hmm. just walking, talking testosterone in a yeah, lot of ways. Like, like, like most, you know, pubescent boys, yeah. he's got a lot of things going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got that gun knobby, you know. They, they, yep. It's like, okay, dude, yeah. really? Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Um, he's yeah. having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> What's the one thing on his mind? Great. Yeah. Good, yeah. good huh. for you. Um. So yeah, so that that is a thing, um, which Lane is. Not expecting. Um, she was a little, little bit surprised by that one. Um, well, you know, may, actually, now that I just think about, it, maybe it's his revenge. You put something oh, in good point. Put something here. Yeah. Oh, Great oh. call, Steve. I that. Yeah. Nice. That's that good because totally it freaks her out. Yeah. Like he was re- ah, Yeah. Cool. Um, and you're right. More, you know, main theme of, of Lane is human contact. Um, you know, and, and physical contact. I think there's there's a lot of that here too, where. He's like, you know, you freaked me out. Now I'm going to freak you out with some, with some human contact. That totally works. Um, and yeah, episode 12, just wait till episode 12. Uh, um, it just makes you wonder if Lane has, like, actual real functioning parents and Yasuo was <laughs> not, like, a complete yeah. freak out. Like, if she had real human contact, real human love, would she mm-hmm. be like this? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Um, yeah, there's the, there's the gum. Did um, we get a bit of Xanadu? Um, and the attempt of a, a global system. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I had the lap. Olivia Newton John. Yeah, I know. We all had that moment. <laughs> yep. um, we get about Ted Nelson, who again, sort of a, uh, a father of the internet, one of, one of the fathers of, of, of stuff. And all this stuff is, is true. Um, so everything after Roswell so far has been factual. The MJ-12 thing, as I understand, is how that happened. Like, that document was delivered with a microfilm and all that kind of stuff. Don't know where it came from. We think we know now. Um, but, yeah, it's um, this is all just you know, pretty much documentary stuff. Um, and now we get the scene. Uh, here's the one I was referring to some, some episodes ago. Yep. 
um, of Lane being introduced to the Iwakuras, um, where she's suddenly now remembering kind of what it was like. And I'm trying to find the the image. There's a lot of white in this. There we go. Yeah. Um, so I want to remind myself, it is not Carl and the, and the, and the short guy um, le- letting her in. Um, just two sort of generals. It's yeah. It's not Lenny and Squiggy. It's no, dudes. Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, <coughs> um, but yeah, but she's you know here. Here's your new family, Lane. Have fun. Um, I like that. Sh- I like that she was pre-assembled in her school uniform. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's like not a suitcase and mm-hmm. street clothes. Like mm-hmm. you know, Mika. Like she's dressed fairly like a teen. Mm-hmm. And here's Lane. Yep. No. No goods. No nothing. Here's a kid in school uniform. Boop, there you go. Yep. <laughs> Um, uh, and yeah, and, and this is where I was talking about. Like you know, they they don't look particularly thrilled. No. It's like mm-hmm. you know, we have to do this thing, and so we're doing the thing. Oh, I, we forgot to mention the part about Taro telling her about the one truth. Oh right, the, 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 yeah. knights, right, the right. knights are working <clears throat> towards the one yeah. truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because truth is a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and, uh, which is funny because you know, uh, we we've already found so much misinformation in this show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Just yeah. a little bit. Um, and it is such a classic kind of an ideal for an organization, right? And we're going to pursue truth, and truth is, is true, and so we, you know, uh, truth is valuable because it is Absolute. true. Absolute. Right, yes. exactly. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> For a like, I think, knockoff. Yeah. yeah. Well, as I was say, it's it's one of those things where it's like the idea of the pursuit of one truth is what mm-hmm. the knights <clears throat> are calling the one truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Versus everybody else in the world, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. is that necessarily the one truth? And then you, you know this, then you go on there and start talking about the Xanadu system, an orbital library of information. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, you could assemble all the real truths, and then. Misinform people about some right. of the other ones of it. It's like, right. ooh, depending on your access to Xanadu. Right. Like, oh, mm-hmm. ouch. Yeah. <laughs> Hence why my face hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it's particularly prescient of the current era in which we live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, so then, then Lane, Lane thrilled with her computer. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that image. Um, <laughs> and, and here's one of the, the, the moments that shocked me this time around because I, I did not remember it this way. We see Lane's room. Which is totally different. And it's <clears throat> totally different. And it's yeah. Lane's room. There are the plushies. Right? Mm-hmm. It's all there. But it has been completely reorganized since, like, all the way back to episode one. Um, it's not dark. It's light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It looks like a 12-year-old girl's room. Yep. Yeah. There's a couch. Everything. There's a table. All the well, yeah. yeah. It mm-hmm. looks like a perfectly prepared uh, set. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because you think about by the time we see Lane in her room with her plushies, her mm-hmm. bed is over there against the window. Right. Mm-hmm. And her desk is in the corner to the left of that couch. Mm-hmm. And then everything else is gone. Yeah. So it's like this window dressing prop set mm-hmm. is where you introduce, you know, this this new manufactured daughter mm-hmm. and then things go downhill from there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like any dollhouse that anybody mm-hmm. makes. Wait, but it begs the question, like, why did it go? Like, who decided to remove those things? I would almost guess Yasuo. But why? What for? To, it's going to sound terrible, mm-hmm. drive her into a corner. Because that's where her Navi was. But, but why? I don't know why that would be, why would he have to drive her like that? Right. To take all the distractions away from her and right. still leave the plushies? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like, yeah. I could see if he's trying to direct her and he just stripped everything out and left the Nobby tantalizingly there mm-hmm. to be like, let's see what she does now. Right. But it's like, that's that's just, it, you know, that's just a weird thing. I wouldn't understand mm-hmm. why that would be necessary, but right. yet here we go. You know what right. I mean? It's like, her room is so radically different by the time we meet her. Right, because, uh, you know, assuming Yasuo is working for Tachibana Labs to make all this happen... You know, well, what this could be, I guess, is we already know there are kind of different factions within Tachibana Labs. Yeah. Uh, so it could be that, like, this is what it was set up for by whoever decided to set it up for, but Yasuo was like, no, this isn't going to work. Um, we mm-hmm. need to 
you know, strip away all these distractions as possible. I don't know. Because, I mean, arguably, if, again, if she mm-hmm. had normal human contact right. and this family was warm and, and inviting, mm. this girl's room would be a wonderful space uh, for Lane to grow up as a yeah. normal girl. And you're not going to necessarily get her natively doing stuff. Uh oh, what? Who said Morph, that? you got it. What if the memories are false? Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Because her next line is, this is all a lie. Yeah. Right. So it is possible that, like, when she was introduced into this, her memory was of, and, and you know, this nicely set up room. And it, was, it actually wasn't. Or it actually wasn't. You know, who knows? All this could be manufactured. Well, we know that she has the, has the authority in the system to be able to delete things. Yep. You know, she's already mm-hmm. changed that. Yeah. So one would argue if you had a system administrator before Lane yeah. came along that they could easily inject or, or remove right. things that, are, that right. meet the uh, script they're looking for. And so another, that's a good point. another possibility um, <laughs> is memories aren't perfect. <laughs> right? Memories are fallible. So yep. maybe this is what she remembers of it being, but it wasn't actually like that at the time, right? Um, it's a whole other layer to what's going on is that, you know, we're, uh, we're some of our memories, but how much can we rely on our memories? <laughs> well, what do we know about eyewitness testimony and mm-hmm. trials? Mm-hmm. That right. depending on yep. certain circumstances, depending on, like, you know, what's happening around the person observing this, that you can really have radically different things from what somebody claims to have seen than what, what like, you could back up with, like, a CCTV yep. experience. Right. Be like, no, that's not actually what happened. But. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, which further reinforces this idea of your absolute truth. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. How do we define that? Um, uh, yeah, and we get the, the Schumann Residence, which, again, is a thing. that. Um, so to be, to be clear, the whole idea of the Schumann Residence is there's a a um, an electrical field surrounding Earth, which, by the way, was discovered by somebody going, there are constant electrical storms on the planet. Right? There are about 2,000 at any given time. That means Earth is is essentially one big electrical... You know, dynamo. Dynamo, yeah. There's electricity running through all of it, which must be at some frequency if we kind of average all that out, all that electricity all around the Earth. Um, and that's the idea of the Schumann, previously the Schumann Residence. Um, and so there is this sort of very low grade sort of resonance going all over the place. What is it, eight megahertz or eight? eight megahertz. Yeah, eight megahertz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, the other thing too is when they were talking about that resonant frequency, it's like you know mm-hmm. how they say that birds, animals, when there's an earthquake, mm-hmm. that they can detect the yeah. deep low frequency, mm-hmm. and it's like you know this is a very dynamic planet, you know, crust mm-hmm. tectonics, mm-hmm. things moving along. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I, that's very interesting. So if, as a biological entity living on the surface of something that has a, a consistent resonant deep frequency, mm-hmm. if you leave and go somewhere else, you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, how does that, how does that affect yeah. you huh. to disconnect from something that is an, a biological element by your development? Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like making me think of Lane. What happens mm-hmm. if you disconnect Lane from the wired mm-hmm. if it's so ingrained in her like a deep frequency? Right. Like, oh. which, which could explain, you know, at the beginning of the show why she's so depressed because she's not on the wired. Yeah. Right. She's got that disconnect. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Beat. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, there, there are lots of fun conspiracy theories around the Schumann frequency being used to send, you know, be mind control thoughts into your brain, right? That's that's where all that five G is going to kill us <laughs> yes, all. Exactly. It's insane. I need to get a Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, we 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 get that layer as well, and then this idea which they they uh, connect in uh, quite nicely, um, where we get this sudden sudden onset. <laughs> anime music video, which I kind of like. Or, <laughs> or really, like, sudden onset, like, uh, Electric Sheep, or whatever that is, the, the whole, like, like, Electronica, which has all the weird um, yeah. stuff, um, where it kind of is, you know, mind blown, uh, that, that gif, um, with the idea of, uh, of, okay, so if we have this resonant frequency, if we have ubiquitous, wi- you know, uh, wireless, basically, <laughs> uh, right. and all these frequencies running, and the number of humans are now the approximately the number of neurons in the brain, could we all basically be a neuron? 
um, uh, effectively. And that's where you know where I you know on the second watch I'm watching this and I'm like going okay is, is the experiment that Lane it, that Lane is part of is this what we're trying is this what the goal that we're looking for is that is that the mankind is going to ascend into this frequency mm -hmm. and become part of the earth because as they're explaining this mm -hmm. they're going well the earth is its own entity yeah and we're just kind of just parasites on walking on the face of it mm -hmm. and um you know so as it so as it's you know going through that i'm, I'm like going, okay well here's there's one explanation of it and it reminded me of the ghost in the shell whole storyline in the second season um you know where it's, oh yeah it, you know so basically yeah. The, yeah the 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 eleven where they're trying to get everybody onto onto the um, onto the internet and just leave their corporal bodies behind mm -hmm. because you get that you get that earlier on when people are talking about the body and how weak mm -hmm. it is as opposed to the mind and going on the thing and then right. you know and then I'm kind of watching the Walter White um, stop sign walk sign kind of yeah. thing going on mm -hmm. you know and how it you know it, it, it works with the red shift blue shift and mm -hmm. you know and for how so long it was just stop 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 mm -hmm. stop and then it's like walk walk and then you have a run one mm -hmm. you know we can take a glimpse of the run one mm -hmm. and then you have that like you say that that weird montage and I really expected the star child at the end of it yeah so, <laughs> <laughs> well well yeah. well Lane is the star child yeah. but um but you know it's but then again but i think what that imagery is supposed to be is the realization of lane lane going oh yeah maybe i'm supposed to shepherd all mm -hmm. of humanity over yeah. and that's why some of these people are saying no we actually like our bodies yeah mm -hmm. and we don't right. want to do this mm -hmm. so don't make us do this yep totally um and i think there's, there's also this, this interesting element of you know neurons don't know they're part of a brain right Right. So a lot of the weirdness that we see happening in the show could be explained as all these phenomena sort of acting on people very effectively and consciously doing something, but they're not, they have no idea what they're actually part of. Um, they're just little nodes in the system. Um, and then, yeah, we have this great transition to Lane standing outside, or is she? Um, oh, not quite yet, um, because we get the... the yeah, the whole character, yes. Dr. Airy. Yeah, uh, and we get this very interesting photograph of Dr. Airy working with someone. Does this man look familiar to anyone? <laughs> we should ask Yasuo. If yeah, he, exactly. Yeah, if he knows uh, who knows. Uh -huh. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so they are clearly working together on, I think it's a power Mac. Um, not sure. Uh, there's definitely a CD-ROM drive on the front. Um, it's not an Altair 88. I don't know. <laughs> um... TSR-80. No, <laughs> definitely not one of those. Um, <laughs> Texas Instrument. <Yeah. laughs> Can't beat it. Yeah. Um, a gateway. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we find out he's dead, which is great. Um, <laughs> which is great. Wonderful. Well, yeah. awesome. actually. Hey, Steve, it's your like, clapping very, moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, <There> we <laughs> um, which obviously ties into, you know, she said at the beginning. Um, as you pointed out, the, the um, uh, he described me as dying on the Yamanote line. That is the sort of the beltway of of Tokyo. It's it's the most popular rail line in Japan. Like it's, it's used constantly every day. So it's it's a very sort of mundane mark that they put into the show. There's like you know, you know this guy threw himself off the Empire State Building, right? That kind of a thing. Where it's like, oh, we all know what that is. Um, and then she sees him. Um, taped up out, out there with yeah all taped up I still I'm not Duct sure tape is a wonderful thing <laughs> you know I'm still not sure what that tape is meant to represent personally um, if he got hit by a train, a train. It, it literally could be just holding the parts of him that got severed <laughs> but like he's got hair yeah tied up and like both arms the torso the hair um, it's just, it's a very interesting like it's a very deliberate placement because I agree with you that it looks like it's sort of holding him together but I, I wonder if it is that and he also like made that a fashion statement where he like then said okay I'm gonna you know yeah. make this my thing you know in in various sort of of uh, attachments out of there well okay this this might be this might be insane but you know what? well welcome uh, to Lane yeah think about 
when they were talking about receiving the undeveloped um, film about Majestic 12. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> suppose, nice. for some unknown reason, mm-hmm. Errory is actually wrapped mm. in, like, like magnetic tape that would have been yeah. backups for mm. all the data to get the seventh protocol running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that's what that is. That's magnetic that tape. It's not actually duct tape. It mm. looks like duct tape, but mm. you're supposed to make the reference to him working right. on the computer, yeah. what a backup would have been at the time, mm-hmm. and then back to the Majestic That's 12. good. Yeah. Mm. And uh, uh, from technology perspective, um, tape backup is far and away the, the uh, most storage dense form of backup. You can store way more data on tape than anything else. So for decades and decades, tape has been the 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 preferred method of that. So I think that actually actually tracks, and especially with the idea of you know this is sort of his backup in the wired. Yeah, I love it. That's what that's because I mean you're right. It doesn't make a whole ton of sense for the some parts of it to be taped like it is, but you know unless why in the digi- why in the digital wired mm. would you need to tape yourself back yeah. together? <laughs> like, yeah. No. Um, also, Sewer Experiments Lane, brought to you by duct tape. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> 3M. Yeah. <laughs> it can hold the wire together. It can hold your house together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, good. Thanks. Although it can't... Uh, the duct tape is... Ah. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a tangent for another yeah. discussion. <laughs> I, I, like, just last night I watched Adam Savage's rant about why he hates duct tape. Um, oh, come on. Um, <laughs> but, Okay, we tangent real quick. Um, as he explains, um, there is no one thing that duct tape does that another tape can't do much better. Right? So duct tape is, if all you have is duct tape, it can, you know, you, you can do some great things with it. But as a sort of general purpose, like I want to build a thing, make a thing, patch something up, he would never like go to duct tape for that. There's always something else that is going to be right. way better at it. So it's, right. it, people... And he said the 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 point of like doing mythbusters episodes about duct tape is that okay, pretend you only have duct tape. What can it do? But people have then turned that into duct tape can do everything. It's like no, actually. Well, like my my hose issue there. Yeah. It's like the flex tape, seal tape, mm. it's a better choice than duct tape. Yep. So mm-hmm. special thing for a special purpose. Exactly. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, okay. um, tangent done. Let's t- t- there we go. Um, <laughs> let's get back to God. <laughs> and I love the fact he's got the like red commie marks. Yeah, just like oh mm-hmm. boy, we've gone old school. Mm-hmm. Um, more for the chat points out that um, the character is inspired by a musician, which I, I had heard uh, some famous guitarist. Boy, d- doesn't that track? <laughs> I got the guitarist right there. Like, let's be honest. Iggy Pop? No. <laughs> um, no. So, Steve, I'm dying to know. What was your reaction to this moment? <laughs> it's before 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so finally, I, I, honestly, though, it, it, it did elicit a, a, mm. a, a word that, or a phrase <laughs> that began with F. <laughs> and, but it did. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm. Well, yes. Okay, we'll go with that. Sure. <laughs> why not? Um, so, uh, when, when Ari shows up and he's in full form or mm. the, the form that he wants to present himself as mm. to Lane and, you know, presents himself as God of the wired, maybe not the God, but mm. at least the God of this. And, you know, they go into that weird conversation mm. later on. That, that's, in, that's an yeah. episode. Next episode 10, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he shows up and... She, and I'm just like going, and I actually had the reaction of finally, yeah, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. finally, uh, yeah. You know, we're dealing with with people who are on the net who are eyes, ears, noses, whatever. You know, who are tr- who are searching, mm-hmm. and Lane is going to these people, and then you have this amorphous thing that comes up and says, "Hi, I'm God," <laughs> and you know, and it's just you know, you're just like, going, "No, no, no, God is," and and so finally. This person decides to re- Ari decides to reveal himself as being the creator, which which a protocol kind of is, mm, yeah. of of what this of what this reality that she's in, 
And it was very Matrixy to me ah, at the end yeah. of the Matrix, where where the guy goes on that long-winded explanation of, you know, goes on forever about how the Matrix is like, you know, this whole man of consciousness and blah, 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 goes through this thing. But he cuts to the chase and just kind of goes, "Look, I made this. You can manipulate it. Mm -hmm. I can manipulate it. This is the next step." And you know, here I am, and here I am to show you the way. Yeah. And I was just like, like, okay, finally, where Lane has found the right conduit to do, maybe not the right conduit, but the yeah. conduit to to move forward to, so that she can actually make decisions because Lane really isn't making the only decision that she really made throughout the entire series at this point was to delete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was the only decision she's made for this whole thing. Everything, everybody, you know, she's trying information. She's trying to, to move forward mm -hmm. with what she's got, with what she can 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 put together. And she, it's just, she goes nowhere. So then Ari shows up and goes, let me show you the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, which lane am I talking to? Because yeah. that's kind of important. Yeah. So, um, and, and full props to the series, because all that happens in the next episode, as you mentioned. And yeah. I'm so glad on rewatching this that we, we get Ari... And then at the beginning of the next episode, we continue the scene. Because I was, I was so afraid right. he'd show up in the next episode. Well, we're off in a whole another direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he goes to the amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Steve, I, it's interesting because the delete decision is a, a very outward and very pronounced decision. Mm, yeah. But we get to watch her make the slow incremental, like, yeah. almost almost native decision. Mm. Think of her sitting with her Navi on the school uh, locker room yeah. steps or that thing, mm -hmm. and she gets up and just... Mm -hmm. She enters into the wire. Mm. She has made a conscious de decision there. And there's when she's in her room, she's also, like, you can see her dipping into the wire. Mm. She's not announcing that decision, and it's not, like, an active thing that mm -hmm. she is sitting down and typing away, like, right. at... But she's got, you know what I mean? She's like, she's flipping in and out. She's mm -hmm. accessing the wired in a very deliberate way mm -hmm. and an accidental way. Because mm -hmm. I think, like Siberia, we see. I don't think when she's talking to the kids, I don't think she meant necessarily to have that reaction from mm -hmm. them where they're like, <gasps> right. yeah. but it, you know, it, that flip switched without her having more of an active decision making mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. but we're seeing her making more more of those incremental decisions to mm -hmm. be wired and not be yeah. wired um, real yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, which we see in the next episode uh, when that, that um, pops in um, because wait, uh, love okay yeah. um, uh, by the end of this episode I was ready to take my most trouble <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Oh. Um, so yeah, so she has this, this this conversation, and it very quickly takes an interesting turn, where she asks, "Who are you?" And Ari replies with what she, what he thinks she's going to say. Right? Mm -hmm. He says, "You know, I'm God. You can't possibly be God, right?" And to your point, John Lane picks up on that and continues it. And I think in this scene, what's happening and Morph points out it is possible that Ari is entirely from of, of Lane's imagination. That she is essentially, she knows Ari is dead, but she needs to talk to him, so she's kind of generating an Ari for herself. Um, or Ari's inside of her, what, ha what have you. Um, but what's interesting about the, the, the conversation to me is that... Ari is her father. <laughs> yes. Um, I believe that. Because um, I think um, you can totally read the conversation that Lane is basically working out the implications of what she's seeing and what she's heard through this conversation, through this back and forth. It's very Socratic. Um, right. you know, Actually, I was thinking of it as a Buddhist um, mm. debate technique. Oh, okay. Cool. The, the, you know, the debate technique that... <clears throat> is it Tibetan? Oops. I don't know. I think. No, it's, it's, just, it, it's just, you know, you, you know, one presents, the other one defends. Mm. And, you know, and, and you... You know, take the you take the opposite. Ah, uh, interesting. And you take the, okay, you, you yeah. take the opposite and go mm. and, and you run with it. Yeah, and to, to see who's right and who's wrong. And so it's it, you know in in the effort for the person who's making the interrogation to be able to make the other person 
to persuade the other person to your thinking by making them think like, as if they were you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, totally. Um, the art of persuasion. Yeah. Um, so he, he, kind of, he finally gets there. Um, um, and makes you kind of realize the situation. Um, possibly. Um, and then we get this, this, uh, the scene in the classroom with, with Lane coming Ugh. in. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, the non-existent desk. Um, and this, this was a, this, this is where I was ready to, to throw, you know, the DVD across the room, Steve, when I was first watching it. <laughs> I was like, oh no, she's been erased from existence and oh, you know, they're, they're, they're screwing around with Lane. Um, um, but then you know, we see Alice's reaction. Um, I think we'll see it here. Yeah, uh, and that's where we know it's, it's a dream, right? Like that—that's—that's yeah. that's not Alice, right? Um, uh, you know, it, but this is a, a perfect example of that kind of fantasy you have of uh, going to school, you know, and no one thinks you're there, right? Um, plus the fact that you know Lane has just he's just hit his head, hit, hit the delete button. So what if she gets deleted? Well, Ari says to her during their conversation that mm-hmm. you know. Um, oh God! To die mm. is merely to abandon the flesh. Right. Right. So I mean, she, mm-hmm. you know, that's like her desk isn't there. She's not yep. there. Mm-hmm. Okay. If she's not flesh, yep. Then she wouldn't need a desk. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah. It's still kind of sad. Oh, but, yeah, totally. Yeah. And that, that's exactly the point of the scene. I think is that she is miserable. Um, you know, not having a body is is not fun for her at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which again, I think is a really important point. Yeah, Ch- Chisa was missed because Chisa gave up the flesh. Yep. You know, it's like, and that was sad. Mm-hmm. So. Exactly. Um, and we get the red shift in the shadows again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very strong. Um, and then Lane comes home. Yeah. Ooh. I kept waiting for them to show a calendar, mm, <laughs> you know, that we yeah, could like yeah, that we yeah. could pin it on so a place like, in time. Be like, wow, did she come home a day later? Mm. Obviously, from the from the house plants, she came home like six months later. <laughs> yeah. Where the hell has Lane been for six months? Mm-hmm. Other than in her room, yeah. locked, yeah, with the door closed. And and that's my interpretation <laughs> of the scene is that um, I think Lane has been spending so much time investigating, studying, learning, you know, trying to do all this kind of stuff. She has completely lost track of time. Yeah. Um, and then um, she comes in. And uh, now what's interesting here, um, uh, I, I think what's, what's happening here, Morph, is this is not Lane's room. Um, when That's Lane, Mika's room. Yeah. yeah when, Lane, when Lane comes in right. here and we see this, this is all Mika's stuff. Which is interesting from what we see a little bit later on, um, um, but yeah, she, so she's um, she's there trying to figure out what's going on. Um, well, the thing that made me what Steve you commented that Mika might have been a backup if Lane had been a yeah. failure. Mm-hmm. I first first flush watching this before mm. by myself without much you know anything, I thought oh Mika snapped. She mm. just went like completely ape, mm. knocked everything around the room, went mm. completely mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. And then thinking about Steve's comment from last time, it's like, mm. suppose somebody was looking for something. Right? Yeah. You right. know what I mean? If Mika was the backup, mm. suppose Yasuo had something in that room mm. that if Lane had failed, if Lane mm. had failed to go to the Navi, failed, failed at the direction that Yasuo was trying to put her in, mm. and Mika was going to be the backup, what was the key trigger that might have been in this room that somebody could have come in and ransacked that room mm-hmm. to try and find it. Yeah. Because you look at the, the living mm-hmm. room where the lampshade is tilted. Right. Mm-hmm. Obviously something happened. Mm-hmm. There's it you know, the plant's just dead. That's fine. That's mm-hmm. just neglect. Like right. yeah, yeah. you know, they did to Lane as as their <laughs> surrogate daughter. Um the love wilted and died. <laughs> um but like the way that the lampshade is tilted, that shows something Physical so was occurring in that mm-hmm. space, yeah. <clears throat> and for Mika's rune to be like ripped apart like that, it's like, mm-hmm. what were you looking for? Yeah, um, you know. Yeah. No. Just a thought. Yeah, I I, I like it because um, one of the things is that we like, clearly every I, it seems to me like everyone left in a hurry. 
Yeah. Except her parents' room. Well, that's pristine. It, the beds are not, you know what I mean? I, They're not messed I up. I thought I saw something in the parents' room that indicated that there was a... The dead flowers are in the parents' room, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. But it's, their it's, beds are totally... It's, it's like it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. hygienically clean. Yeah. Like oh. Interesting. So, yes, yeah, so it's possible that they vamoose, probably with Mika, um, and then, you know, the cleaning squad came in <laughs> to figure out what yeah. the heck is, is left. That makes sense. Um, I got a lot. Um, I think that, uh, uh, well, I think the point of going into, into Mika's room is that Lane is trying each room in the house. So she goes yep. to the living room, parents' room, Mika's room, sees that Mika's room is messed up, and um, she starts collecting things to kind of try to figure out some, some of what's going on. Um, but I think just kind of thoughtlessly. Well, I mean, it's also, it's, it's, it feels like a trying to establish a semblance of normal, mm-hmm. normalcy mm-hmm. that, oh, Mika's stuff, it's on the floor. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll just, you know, it, this Get shouldn't on. be here. Mika wouldn't like mm-hmm. that on the floor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Wow, the real lane, you know, this unexpected situation here that yeah. you're not out doing research, you're not mm-hmm. out, like, on the wired. Yeah. Something has happened in your physical space that yeah. you don't have any kind of grasp of so put things into perspective and put them where they should be yeah like, it, it's kind of shock almost yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and also obviously the realization of her fear <laughs> that she's disappearing um uh and the father of the year shows up mm-hmm. he's yep. no show tucker but you know what <laughs> oh god you want there. <laughs> of course they do oh, why wouldn't i <laughs> sorry who Show Tucker. Tucker. He hasn't watched from Metal Full Metal Alchemist. Alchemist. Oh, yeah. The yeah, one you always a... see the meme about making a chimera. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That wait, wait for that. Yeah. Watch that you, series. You'll wait for yeah. that special. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to spoil it for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Unless God. you want us to. <laughs> God, you went there. But <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. Yes, Yasuo. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> he, at least he explains things though. Um, to a little girl. <laughs> no, no, it's not. That's the thing. Oh. You know, to him, she's not a little girl at all. I yeah. know. Um, she's an entity now that yeah. has the ability to make her own decisions, and he and he realizes that there's nothing, <clears throat> even as a surrogate father, there was nothing that he could really do with her. Yeah. And now he's at the point where, and the whole reason why they they, they beat him out out of there was because he saw that. She has become. She has ascended, mm-hmm. and yeah. as such, he knows that there's jack all that he's going to be able to do about anything. So he just says one last dig in there, and he's just like, "I just wanted to let you know that I came to love you." Mm-hmm. Now, at that point, I was just like, "You are so full of," mm-hmm. you well, know, and that he and he is a being like, like her, her like, right. oh, yeah, dude, oh, dude, dude, come on. But again, then, you know. You know. But he kind of does. I mean, right. you know, you know, he kind of does. But right. you know, he, he but he walks away, and I'm just like, I'm just like, and that was the whole reason why he came back. Maybe it was just, and I don't think he came back to tell her that he loved her. I think he literally came back and was just like, um, so what's happening next? What's what's going in here? I and actually now to your now to yeah. your point, John, which I didn't think about before. Mm. Is that maybe he came back thinking, oh, the thing that I was looking for in Mika's room isn't in Mika's room. Oh, mm. oh crap, Lane's here. What do I do? Ooh, possible. I hadn't thought yeah. about that. It's yeah. possible. Yeah. Um, I I think, I think Yasuo screwed up. Um, I think Yasuo was put in a position that he is he was perhaps incapable of achieving, because he says, you know. Um, <clears throat> I was meant to be a father for you, and I know I didn't do that. You know, I, I didn't live up to that role. So there's a self-awareness there, yeah. um, and where, and, and I think it's why he says, you know, I'm just gonna level with you at this point. Like I've been lying to you this entire time, so I'm just gonna be <clears throat> completely honest with you here about what you are and all that kind of stuff, um, because we tried this thing and, you know, it worked, but the path there didn't work. You know, yeah. we got what we wanted, uh, but I, I did not do what I was supposed to do. Um, and I think that, that that's the thing, because I think Yasuo is, at some of the one we saw it early on, he's scared out of his mind. He doesn't show it here, 
but the fact that he screwed up so royally with normalizing humanity with Lane means she could do anything. And she could rewrite him out of existence in a moment. Yep. Um, and so I think he, he, he comes back. I really like the idea that he comes back to, like, look at Nika's room or whatever. I think that totally makes sense. Um, but I, I, to that point, I, there is no reason for him to say, I did love you, if he didn't mean it on some level. Um, I think he did have a fondness for her. And you saw that in, you know, helping with mm-hmm. the computer and so forth. Yeah. Um, it's just way too little, way too late. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Um, Which I mean, it's 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 the the, of the classic what if moments. It's mm-hmm. like suppose Yasuo had gotten like delivered Lane when she was smaller. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that he had had right. more time to like dial yeah. in to like, okay, these are the objectives. We mm-hmm. you know we want this being that is yeah. going to be this connection. We want this being to have a general understanding of what it means to be human, so that you mm-hmm. don't erase humanity. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> right. You know, versus and getting delivered Lane at a point where it's like, okay, he's not entirely sure what to do about this, and he doesn't have time to do anything like super yeah. constructive. And and that's my theory is that you know, Eri screwed up everything by changing Protocol Seven and releasing an early version of Lane onto the wire, yeah. and like they have to get Lane online now. Um, yeah. And, you know, they're going to spend his, you know, um, well, and more specifically, like, not only can it it not take years, as soon as she finds out what's going on, she's going to start to change. Um, Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He maintains his clinical aura quite effectively from start to finish and all this. The most excitement he ever had was when he was setting up Initially, the whole bank of computers to show Lane, mm-hmm. and then everything since then has been very sort of flat effect emotionally. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, thanks. Thanks, Yasuo. Yeah. You're a wonderful guy. With his headless game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now Lane is left in the wire. Uh, and we see a very clear version of that. Yeah. Um, there are the circuit boards overhead. Um as Lane trying to figure out what's going on, and we get... <laughs> so, episode 10 is where you can really see the budget start to leak through, because I think there are, like, four or five times where it's like, that's an interesting interpretation of Lane's character design. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, kind of, you got it close. Um, and well, she's changing. She's changing, ways. exactly. So, she's evolving. Yeah. Character um, design-wise. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, I agree. Um... So yeah, so and and, and and here's where they go back and, and the, the club is dead. Um, yeah, and and they have the, the whole thing with with um, with all that. Um, whereupon the knights have a bad day. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Tachibana Labs is not very friendly to the knights. At this no. Point. <laughs> um, oh boy. And it's funny because I think up to this point, you you know, uh, Carl and the short guy have been. Just men in black. They've just been standing there, <laughs> observing, yeah. taking people along. Um, and then uh, suddenly, it's like, uh, nope. Um, this is this is gonna this is something's gonna happen here. Um, Carl introduces him to the liquid carbon cooling system. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. What do you need to chill out? <laughs> um, I'm unsure. Um, what they're actually doing here specifically. Um, it looks like it's clear. Obviously, some kind of toxin. <laughs> Killing them? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. exactly how. Um, obviously, yeah. it is meant to be something where it's it's not obviously traceable. It's traceable, like a bullet yeah. wound, right? Yeah. Um, but it's an awful lot of liquid he's injecting all at once. So I'm like, damn! Which um, kind of, I mean, begs the question. It's like, we have not seen any any indication really other than Ares' um, crime scene investigation. Mm. We have not seen any authority, any no. figure. We have mm-hmm. not seen, like, you know, you pull up and there's the Japanese National Ministry of Information and Control <laughs> vehicle, <laughs> right, like, yeah, right. parked off in an intersection, mm-hmm. like, oh, God, there they are. Get a, you know, get a tag mm-hmm. on them. We've seen nobody. Yeah. So I'm kind of guessing Tachibana Labs has 
more than enough capability to just push them out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet, totally. this is like a very interestingly elaborate way to yeah. murder them. Well, and what's interesting is that you know, um, um, it's it's elaborate on the on one level, but on the other hand, it's like this ensures that there's no. How did he fall out the window? How, no, he just slumped over. He just died, and so that that requires a whole different kind of investigation than if you see these various accidents. Um, so it's interesting how they're kind of balancing that those things. Well, and the thought that occurred to my mind as well was. Could the liquid be something that removes them to the wire? Oh, interesting. You know what I mean? So that mm. is like a, a catalyst mm. to move them over mm -hmm. using the seventh protocol into the wire. So they physically are giving up the flesh. Mm. So they're – but, you know, that well, would yeah. leave, yeah. leave some hackers in the <laughs> wire. That yeah. Be a problem. yeah. But right. it just you know I, mean, yeah. I was trying to mm -hmm. rationalize a lot. Of when, sure. When yeah. when I when I first saw this scene, yeah. the, the initial reaction I had was, okay, we're doing a mind play, mm -hmm. uh, or 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 something yeah. like that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But then when we get to the mother and the way that she's face down in her coffee, yeah. I'm going, no, 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 we're all dead here. Yeah. Well, and then it goes on to oh, how the, the fat fat guy with the bullet ball, ball, ball in his mouth. Going, yeah. <laughs> I'm like going, damn. Um, yeah. That's pretty indicative of a, of a murder if you're a police investigator. <laughs> right. Oh no, he had this thing about eating light bulbs. That's totally normal. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but uh, but you know, as they say, Lane was the one who <clears throat> pretty much identified who all the knights were, mm, and yeah. then put that information out there, and then Lenny and Squiggy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then Lenny and Squiggy started doing it yeah. and their thing. And, and by the way, to be clear, that's coffee. In case anyone is yeah. curious, I thought it was blood. Yeah, I thought it was blood too. Like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. But you're absolutely right, and then you know you also have the the just twisting the knife of the, the kids saying, "Oh, I just died, mom. I just died." Yeah. Yeah. Think, oh, dang it! Well, dang it! In about five minutes, you're gonna figure out what real How, death yeah. is all about. <laughs> How did Carl get in? Ice mm -hmm. her, and the kid didn't notice, or is this well, like the kid was in the bathroom? Carl mm -hmm. ices her, and then yeah. the kid comes out, and resumes the game, doesn't notice mom's face down on the coffee. Yeah. Um, I guess. Well, and it's it's. Is not you know uh, Carl and the short guy doing this for all of them? Uh, right. Because we know they're yeah, a worldwide organization. Them, right. yeah. Okay. Well, the people who pushed Lane into uh, Yasuo's uh, mm. house with everybody, those two guys are somebody else. Right. Actually, or actually, for her, I think she killed herself. Honestly, she saw her possible. name on the screen. And yeah. She just said, "Okay, yeah. I'm done." That, 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 I, I never thought of that possible. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's very interesting how when they show up at, at the house with Elaine mm -hmm. and they do nothing, and then yeah, you know, short guy Squeaky is just all half, all sorts of happy mm -hmm. right now, yeah, and yeah. and Carl is just being Carl, <laughs> and, <laughs> except for the, the very last moment. Mm -hmm. But they're like they don't really do any; they don't feel it necessary to do anything to her, even yeah. though they've killed off all the mm -hmm. all the. The knights, knights and everything, and they they established that they know that she's a game world game changer and all this stuff, and then they just leave her, and then Carl just stops and turns around and says, you know, I I, I do love you, mm -hmm. which you know again I'm just like, oh, uh, why? What context? Please give me context, but you yeah. don't get any. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. it leaves you, you with that. You're like, what? What, what happened? That? Wait, mm -hmm. what? No. And then you, you're you're stuck with thinking, okay, the worst, which is, you know, he loves her. <laughs> and then you kind of go on to think, going, well, what if actually he worships her? Because mm -hmm. there's that whole conversation with Ari about having worship. Having people who believe in what you and follow you. Well, you. Yeah. Um, so what if he's that person for her? Yeah. Yeah. Um, to be clear, um, in Japanese, he used the word tsuki. Um, which means the the closest word I've come up with is attachment. Um, it means I have sort of an attachment to you. I have a, a connection to you. I like you. I'm right. Yeah. To you. you know, I've yeah. I've I've seen it used in romantic anime to mean you know I like you as more than a friend, but n you know not like I love you. Right? Brent Sama ski. <laughs> yeah. huh? Basically. Yeah. What? what? Huh? Money. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> Because uh, everyone likes Brent's cookies. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not past 10. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie what to keep that? 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I, I completely agree with you, Steve. I think that is kind of the, the, um, the I don't think he means, you know, love in any romantic sense. Right. Um, but I think he, he's, he's, there's a certain, um, maybe not worship um, in the religious sense, but worship in the, I, you know, I respect you in, right. in a very deep way. Because um, again, he takes off the, the stuff again. Yeah. Um, just to say, do I could do a face? And that very much, you know, now I will look on you with my own eyes. Um, uh, did we establish that those were goggles that allowed them to see wired and reality? It, it, it is never deliberate, it is never explicitly shown. Um, okay. The. And it's, it's also interesting because, you know, we see Crazy Internet Guy earlier on, but he's trying to copy the knights, and these guys yeah. are not the knights. So, yeah. you know, it's not necessarily that stuff, but also this kind of stuff was certainly, you know, current at the time of the idea of the kind of technology you could do to do that. So, unknown. Um, I believe these are most common, or most directly related to Snow Crash. Um, in Snow Crash, um, it's Neil Stevenson novel, one, one of the... The, the classic cyberpunk novels, uh, they have people called gargoyles uh, who are exactly like this. They have these um, uh, 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 goggles that they go around, you know, uh, that give them, it feeds them information. It's not, it, it's, they have a direct internet connection, but it's basically, it gives you a, a like, uh, an overlay. Visual feed. Right, visual feed of, right. of lots of stuff. Mm-hmm. You can kind of do all sorts of cool things that Heads way. up display. Yes, exactly. And so it could be it's more like that, where it's giving you that, and you can have like infrared and, and kind of cool stuff. Right. Well, it's because I always thought it was interesting that, that Squiggy never removes them. No, yeah. No. And it's like Carl is the only one that takes off basically that yeah. thing that's, that's filtering the information coming mm-hmm. through and takes them off to view Lane mm-hmm. with his human eyes. Yep. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. even if the, you know, the, the Star Wars reference, it's, no, that, <laughs> it really is. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. he's yeah. actually looking on Lane as a person looking at Lane – the physical mm-hmm. link, yeah, yeah, versus interpreting her through whatever the goggles are telling. Yeah, and it's just like, hmm. and, and as more from Fungi are, are pointing out in the chat, I, we see the Wayne effect very much, you know, here of worshiping Wayne as a god. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I do, yeah. Let's all love Wayne is a, a line we see later on, um, and that is starting yeah. to all sort of weave in a little bit here as we're yeah. trying to understand what she is. So, do we think that, and and. I don't know if I'm getting into spoiler territory or not. Do we think Tar- uh, Taro's dead? You know, uh, I wondered that because he was a helper. Yeah, he knew yeah. things. Not a lot. I mean, of I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, they they killed they killed my favorite internet guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love that character for all the brief time he was on there. But yeah, um, yeah. possible. Um, things get weird from this point out. <laughs> oh, 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 no. So, no, because the rest yeah. of the thing was normal. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is where things really start to get weird. Um, it's been such a pleasure ride the whole way so mm, far. Pleasure <laughs> cruise. <laughs> exactly. Um, the Maldives. Yeah. Well, and, and we also get here very much this, um, I, I keep skipping past, uh, the, the, very much the contrast of we're now pushing very much more towards uh, the supremacy of the wired and it's a, you know, the, the wire is, is clearly kind of what's driving all this and where Lane needs to go. But we see Lane all plugged into the wire, like literally, physically, yeah. uh, even with the cables like wrapped around her neck, like it's collared her. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't look happy. No. She physically looks like she's degrading. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think she's even got them clipped on her ears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That little thing. Well, the uh, thing that bothered me was was it being clipped on the lower lip. Yeah, that, that's a uh, great just little ooh ooh. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, the taste sensor, so you know what right. the wire tastes like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally. Toast. Burp. Yep. Toast. Um, it tastes like electricity. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, now Lane has another conversation with Doctor Airy. What is Lane wearing? Like a sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. What sweatshirt? Wait, man, I don't know what sweatshirt. I'll show you what sweatshirt. Mika sweatshirt? That sweatshirt. That is what Lane goes over and picks up. When oh, she walks wow. in. So Lane is has put on 
a connection to her family. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Um, and it is this kind of interesting layer here. Uh-huh. Um, Layers. Exactly. Layers. You know, Lane is refusing to completely give up that connection. The physical connection, the physical world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, and he's using that in her conversation with Ari, trying to figure everything out. And totally agreed, um, Morph, the wind animation in this is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is very hard to represent wind in animation, because wind has no physical form. Um, and you have to show it through characters reacting to it, or through like speed lines, which always look a little bit weird. So having all the like straw going <laughs> everywhere is a yeah. brilliant touch. Which um, I would love to know if anybody has any interpretation of the use of straw. Right, yeah, I do not because know. Because you could have done, I mean, quintessential classic, Sakura petals. Right. You know true. what I mean? It's like that's mm-hmm. used in yeah. umpteen billion anime. So what is yeah. the significance of straw necessarily? Could it be chaff? Mm. Ooh, right. separating the wheat from the chaff. Right, exactly. And that's mm-hmm. truth from lies. Right? You're okay. Literally, Ooh, yeah, could, I was, threshing I was out. she could be a witch. Yeah, that yeah, could be too. Um, yeah, it's a flying witch crossover, actually. Okay, I do have to see. They're going to burn her on the... On the um, yeah, I like that separation of wheat and chaff. Yes, yeah, it yeah, flies yeah. from the truth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I just interpreted it as, as um, destruction of, of the construct around her. Oh, yeah, that works too. I like that a lot too. Just like like the apart. reality's falling apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that works. Um, and it does have that sense as Lane's reality is getting sort of more abstract and kind of falling apart around her, um, uh, symbolically or physically. And then, can we talk for a minute about Dr. Airy grabbing her hair? Yeah. That is one of the most violating motions I have ever seen in anime. When it's just, you know, grabbing her hair. But there's just so, something so possessive about it. Oh! I, honestly, the first time it happened, I kid you not, I thought it was going to smell her hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, you know what I mean? Because it is... I, I would have stopped, and I would have gotten <laughs> on... Screamed. I would have gotten on Discord, and I would have gotten... Brent, I would have been like, the, the hell, the hell, the hell. <laughs> but we it, all I love mean, Wayne. It, yeah. <laughs> but it does... I mean, his touching her hair like that, there is a incredibly creepy intimacy yeah mm-hmm. yes where it's just like oh mm-hmm. and it's and it's a creepy intimacy that her being kissed by taro mm. isn't the same thing right exactly right. you know what i mean it's yeah. like this mm-hmm. is this is it's it's possession. sinister it's possession. yes it's possession. It's possession. sinister yeah. mm-hmm. you know yeah. what i mean because it's like Aries not he's not doing this out of an affection no He's no. doing this out of out of a sense of control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Harry, like, Harry uh, believes that he built Lane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and we talked about this before. I think, yeah, because we, we saw both Yasuo and, and, and Ari. I think Yasuo built her body. Ari built her software. Ari built her mind, basically. Yeah. So to Doctor to to Ari, this is just a shell, right? And so he is using this as a way of kind of grabbing her attention. He doesn't, you know. I'm, I'm sure he knows, but to him this isn't possessive. It's just, hey, tugging on your shirt, you know, whatever. Um, and but it has this all of these creepy connotations. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, no, it's not. That's a great. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that morph. He's touching her, but they are not touching each other. Yeah, it's a great way of putting it. Yeah, it's and very non consensual. Yeah, touching her, your skin. He's right. Touching her hair. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, I'd still slap him. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, she does, um, it, uh, in a real way, because um, they had this conversation, um, and I'm trying to remember. And he goes, "It's the real you." And then she says, "Yeah, don't put your hands on him." Yeah, <laughs> she finally does something, um, and says, "Like it matters, you know. What does it matter if it's if it's real or not?" Right. And Aerie reacts to this for the first time. And you see this, you know, energy wave rippling out of this. Because I think this is the point where Lane realizes. 
if she has this level of control, Aerie is powerless. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the new protocol. He's the old. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he is desperately presenting himself as the god of the wired, and you're really my worshiper, can't you tell? And now she's like, I can do whatever the heck I want. Yep. Um, and, yeah, and, and the, the voice changed, totally, where she's, uh, that self-confidence comes in. Um, yeah, and, and as, as soon as that wired lane comes in, I completely agree with Morph, as soon as the wired lane comes in, Aerie can't control her anymore. Um, um, and suddenly he's being pushed back by her power. Um, I, I completely agree with Fungi. Uh, Aerie's smart, but he seems like just a damn soul desperate to survive, so he's leeching Lane's power, and we'll see that at the end. A, a very strong image of, of, of that at the very end. Um, uh, and Lane is left with the, the wires falling around her. Boy, is that an image. Yeah, the scorched burn <laughs> yeah. right below her, like, damn. The wired is falling apart. <laughs> there we go. Um, and credits, basically. Which, given the, you know, a, a third a third element, mm. um, when Lane was outside looking up and saw the circuitry running yeah. above her, mm-hmm. like, not obviously the telephone wires or electric mm-hmm. wires, but literally circuit board above her with all the yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it possible that because the wires have fallen, you see in this scene where the wires are falling down, that that straw... Is the circuit Ooh, board is falling? I like that. So that's yeah. all cascading down because she's breaking everything up. Like that pulse wave she blows yeah. out cracks everything down that you sit. Mm-hmm. I Third love that. That that works really really well. Um, no, I think that 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 totally works. Um, there's kind of a, uh, another layer to that too, where if she's now realizing, you know, if she did this with the wired. And she's now, you know, realizing she has she has complete power, complete power. She's kind of moving beyond the wired in and of itself. So oh, yeah. it could be that you know the, the wired is kind of no longer imprisoning her, if you will, uh, and she is just you know pushing beyond the boundaries. Um, well, we know yeah. that she's gotten better to to slipping in and out. Mm-hmm. You know, the wired lane slips in, wired lane slips out, yep. physical lane in and out. Mm-hmm. It's like. Wow, yeah, if she just busted that wide open, that means she's standing in both places at the same time. And yeah. I was like, <clears throat> boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the real wired, if you will. Yeah. Um, that's a good point, Morph. Um, has wired lane and, leak, and, and weak lane, like physical lane, disconnected? Is there a point at which there's a bifurcation? In lane, um, and we've seen you know, the physical lane and the wired lane just kind of separate, and we this is now physical lane left behind. Now that wired lane is kind of broken and broken free, that's possible too. Um, I like that interpretation as well. So, Steve, mm-hmm. what do you think is going to happen next? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Where are you now? I, I should I should ask. Sort of. Oh, so. Um, I was very glad that I went directly to Kino's journey to <laughs> watch after after today. Um, so I think what the next few episodes are going to be is um, is the end of Akira. Uh, I think it's going to be the breakdown of everything. I think it's going to be the apocalypse, whatever that is, mm-hmm. you know, you know, for for Lane or for. I think she's just. I think Ari is just now. I think he'll probably be. Whatever, um, mm-hmm. you know, after this, after this episode, and mm-hmm. I think it's just going to be her deconstructing and reconstructing into whatever the new wired is, mm-hmm. which um, this is going to sound weird a little bit, but I'm kind of like going when I saw the wires coming down, mm-hmm. which to me represented airy mm-hmm. and the wired and the, the lack of humming, and then mm-hmm. instead you have all the circuitry going above you. And, you know, I think I thought that the wind was more along with her destroying the old protocol. This is the new protocol coming in. So she's going to she's going to flush everything out, the old protocol out and she's going to bring it in. And then I think we're going to see the third impact. I mean, that's that's Mm -hmm. what I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. You guys have seen it. So um, that's 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 my guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just like, 
Good. No, I'm just like I'm just like after after this, I'm just like going after all the creepiness of these two episodes and like the the just the whole just like I'm like it's almost over. <laughs> it's almost over. And then I in the home after, stretch. <laughs> I'm in the home stretch, and then I looked at Discord and I saw somebody saying something about Evangelion, and that's what we're getting into next. <laughs> 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 Damn it! We're getting into the good Evangelion, though. <laughs> We're getting to the rebuild. The, the, you know, the one where he fixes all of his mistakes. And, you know. But, uh, but no, it's seriously... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, enough it's, time it's, for that. Yeah. <laughs> seriously, uh, I, I think... I may not be back next heading. week. <laughs> after saying that on the internet. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I just think this is the, this is the point where, where Lane truly ascends and she recreates everything. And, you know, I, I believe that she, you know, she'll have the I am Tetsuo moment mm. at the end, and the world becomes, you know, we're all connected. Neo Tokyo, Neo Tokyo, future, 1988. Mm-hmm. Oh no, we'll see. That that that's pretty much what I thought actually when I was watching this first time too. At this point, I was like, okay, it's time to just rebuild everything, so to speak, um, and we'll have a whole new a uh, whole new reality. So yeah, so we'll we'll, we'll see. You guys have much more apocalyptic ideas than I did when I first watched it. <laughs> oh. It's like I, I honestly could, I could not wrap my head around what the hell was gonna, where was this gonna end? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, I had no expectation. I'm like, mm. okay, if the world just suddenly pops out of existence, I wouldn't be shocked. Mm-hmm. If everything went like super normal, like extra creepy, like <laughs> why is everything okay now? Mm-hmm. Like. I was equally prepared for that. <laughs> like, to me, I, 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 I it's gone so many ways to get here. So, like, I will t- is possible. I will tell you something though. This is one of the few times that I come down on the side of dub or sub. Mm. I question, and I'm coming down on the side of dub. Mm. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, not not sub. Yep. Okay. Because um, I can only because you brought in some context for when um, Carl. You know, mm. did the the attachment statement? Mm-hmm. You know, I would never have gotten that. I would never mm-hmm. have, have gotten that. Mm-hmm. And um, but I come down on the dub side of this because I j- there's yeah. so much here, yeah. you know. And it's just like I cannot do this in the processes in another mm-hmm. language with mm-hmm. subtitles going on down. Yeah. I need to be able to pay attention to everything, so I need to be able to hear something familiar. Yeah. As I'm watching this, and I'm not saying that the, the voice acting is bad. It isn't. No, no, no. It, you know, it isn't. But just for you know, my for for you know, English ears, I need to hear the English language to to even hope because yeah. I could. I mean, you know, John, you talk about how sometimes you watch things only in in in, in Japanese and there's no subtitles, but you usually get the gist of it. Yeah. No. <laughs> not no, at no, all. No, 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 not gonna happen. I, I'd love to find somebody that we could try that on. Oh. <laughs> Turn off subtitles and be like, listen, sit with us. For the, here's the idea. Watch it and tell us, what do you get out of this? I, what, do you, what do you feel is happening? <laughs> so I don't want to make an enemy for life, John. <laughs> I don't want to damage don't, anybody psychologically right. either. <laughs> um, Serial experiments enemy. Are yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm really going to sit you in this quiet room and you just watch <laughs> this and we'll see what happens. We'll observe. <laughs> I'm really glad you brought that up because one of the things people often don't um, know about Japanese is that Japanese emphasis is very different from English emphasis. Yeah. When somebody's being quiet, when somebody's being intense, that doesn't sound the way it sounds in English. And so there's a lot of stuff in Lane where Carl, for example, is very even keeled. He's very thing. Um, in Japanese, you wouldn't understand the exact implications of that the way you would in English because of how that is. The same thing with Yasuo, right? Yasuo is a very even-keeled dialogue, which just may seem normal in Japanese. You just can't pick up on those specifics of how that performance is meant to sound real or realistic right. because these characters are not screaming attack phrases at each other. They're, they're not doing, you know, over-the-top anime kind of emoting um, so these right. characters are really, you know, really important. Um, and I think it, it, it really, it, it, it communicates a lot that you wouldn't otherwise get in anime. 
Um, and yeah, this is, in my mind, this is one of the great English dubs. Like, they, they really put the time in, they really tr you know, tried to, to nail everything, um, get it really, really, really good. Um, but yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, uh, to Morph's point, one of the problems is that Japanese voice acting is, is relatively limited in range. Um, you know, Japanese actors generally don't shout. Yeah, they don't emote the way English actors do in a lot of right. scenes. So <coughs> when English, when when you get an English performance, they are representing something realistic, even though it's louder, because that's what it sounds like in English. So it's weird. Right. Um, but anyway, s s getting even further sidetracked. Um, so yeah, that is two episodes of Lane, which only took us an hour and a half to get through. <laughs> And in all fairness, Steve, you can watch it with stuff. You just have to stop every five minutes to make notes. <laughs> five so you seconds. See stuff. <laughs> oh, I, I try to keep it at five at minutes. That way I have a little bit of stretch. <laughs> me at the end of a 24-minute episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to unpack. Um, this yes. is why people are like, you know, man, you know, I love Demon Slayer. It's so deep. I'm mm -hmm. like, no. There are layers to it. You know, it's 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 not simple, but let me show you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it keeps on giving. Cool. So uh, next week we will be covering episodes eleven and twelve of Elaine. Close, We're close. To because the I wanted to devote a whole week to just the final episode of Lane. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. We're just gonna we'll, we'll we'll do that and talk about where it goes and where all the all those things uh, for the final episodes. Yeah, so next week will be episodes 11 and 12 of Lane. I'm actually just pulling up. Um, uh, that is... Um, that's interesting. Um, is that yes. the last week of August? Yes. So, in <sighs> pornography, one of my favorite words ever. Wow. Uh, and a landscape. Those will be coming soon. Um, and that will do it. So we're going to take a quick break for just a few minutes. Oh, thank God. Then we'll be back to talk about more modern anime <laughs> and the latest anime news. We will be right back. <laughs> 